Section 1.7, Solving Problems Involving Objects. The main focus of this section is composite objects. Now a composite object is any time you've got two or more separate objects put together. For example, I've got that picture down below. There is no formula for that shape alone. But if I break it up into two parts, we have a cone right here, and then we have a hemisphere right here. So we break it into its two parts, now we can find either the surface area or the volume of each of those parts, and then add them together. Let's do an example or two. Here's the first one. Find the volume of this composite object to the nearest tenth of a cubic centimeter. So I'm looking for volume, and I've got two parts. I've got a cylinder on the bottom, and I've got a hemisphere on top. Let's start with the hemisphere. Let's start with the hemisphere. And we are going to use the formula for area of a sphere, and then divide that by two. Let's put in what we know. We've got that radius of 18 centimeters. Let's do those calculations. And since we're not dealing with a sphere, we're dealing with a hemisphere, we're going to have to take that number divided by 2. So the volume of the hemisphere on top is 12,208.3 cubic centimeters. Let's do the volume of the cylinder. The volume of a cylinder is no different than finding the volume of a right prism, area of the base times the height. So in this case, the area of the base of a cylinder is pi r squared. And then we're going to times that by the height. Let's put our numbers in. We'll go through the calculations. And the total volume of that cylinder is 32,000. 555.5 cubic centimeters. We'll finish that off by putting together a total volume. And all we're going to do is add those two numbers together. 12,208.3 plus 32,555.5. Our end answer is 44,763.8 centimeters cubed. So a couple of details that will help you find success in a question like this. Composite questions often have a lot of parts. So label your stuff. Make sure you know what things are. Don't just write a bunch of random numbers down. Label what that calculation is and try to keep things separate. That way when you come back to it later, you know exactly what you wrote. And that's part of documenting your work. Let's move on to the next example. So the next example asks us to find the surface area of this composite object. We're going to break it down into its faces. The one thing we need to be careful of, in volume, it didn't matter how or where they joined, but in surface area it does. If I look at the top of the box and the bottom of the pyramid, that's where they join. But because it's right up against each other, there is no face there. There is no surface area. It's inside the shape. So I have to be careful when I'm using my formulas that I don't accidentally put that surface area into my final answer. So I don't use the base of the pyramid, and I don't use the top face of the box. Let's get started on that. So I'm going to start with the pyramid. In that pyramid, I've got four triangular sides and no base. I've got enough information on the triangle to be able to find its surface area. I know I've got a height of 4 meters, and I know that this side should be the same as this one on the bottom, so I'm looking at a 5 meter base. Let's find the area of one of those triangles. Let's do the square box on the bottom. Now it's going to have 5 square sides. Remember, we're not going to use the top side because it's inside of our composite shape. Area of a rectangle is length times width. We're looking at each box having an area of 25 meters squared. When I'm doing my total area, I've got my triangles on top, and there's four of them. Each of those triangles is 10 meters squared, and we've got four faces. We're going to add that to the square faces. Each of those is 25 square meters, and I've got five of those faces. Go through our calculations. And we have a total of 165 square meters. So once again, take your composite object, break it down into its pieces, figure out the surface area of each piece separately, and then add them all together in the end. And that's the surface area of a composite object.